you're going to face suffering. Now, is Paul telling Timothy, be reckless, be crazy, just go seek out persecution, go seek out pain? No, what Paul is doing is saying this, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus Christ. Didn't Jesus say that in Matthew 6, 24, 16, 24? That's what he's called. D deny yourself. Be willing to die. Be willing to suffer. Are we willing to face whatever? Come what may, we would serve God and we would be in the center of God's will. We, we say this all the time. I want to be in the, the center of God's will. But is the center of God's will always the safest place for us to be? No. But it's, it's the, the best place for us to be. And so Paul says, Timothy, face, share suffering. And, and he says this. I love there at the, the tail end of verse 12. He says, uh, this is why I suffer as I do. But I'm not a sheep. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. And so he says this, all of that, go back and look from verses uh, 9, 10, and 11. What Paul is talking about is the gospel. And so Paul says it's the gospel, the fact that Jesus came to live the life that I could live, died the death that I should have died. He rose victoriously over an enemy that, that, that I could never defeat. It's because of that that I can face persecution, that I can face hatred, that I can face whatever I face in this life, because God is in control. Thank you, Mark, for preaching part of my sermon a while ago. We can skip over that part, right? God is sovereign. God is over everything. Nothing catches God off guard. Nothing surprises God. God is powerful. He's in control. And so your suffering doesn't surprise God. Your pain doesn't surprise God. All things work to the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Romans 8.28. So whatever it is that you face in your life, we can face it confidently because we know that God is in control and that the pain is not the end. And so graduating seniors, we can be faithful and we can do whatever it is that God has called us to do. Senior adults, you can be faithful and you can do whatever it is that God has called you to do because He is in control. But we look at our, our world around us, and we all know this, we, we talk about it often, the world around us is not the, the best place, it's not the ideal place. We live in a Genesis 3 world, don't be surprised by that. But John Stott says this, he says, We may see evangelical faith, the faith of the gospel everywhere spoken against, and the apostolic message of the New Testament ridiculed. We may have to watch an increasing apostasy in the church as our generation abandons the faith of its fathers. Don't be afraid. God will never allow the light of the gospel to be finally extinguished. True, He has committed it to us, frail and fallible creatures. He has placed His treasure in brittle earthenware vessels. And we must play our part in guarding and defending the truth. Nevertheless, and I love this part, nevertheless, in entrusting the deposit to our hands, He has not taken His hands off. God hasn't let you go. God let, hasn't let his gospel go. It's going to go forward. It's going to continue. So we can be confident. May we never forget that God is with us. God is within us. God is before us. God is in control. And so Paul is reminding Timothy, his famous last words for Timothy, persevere, keep pushing, stand firm, be willing to suffer, be in the center of God's will at all costs. And so my, my word to, to these students, to, to everyone this morning, is be in the center of God's will no matter the cost. Because God's worth it. Because God's worth it. And then he says this in verse 13 now. We're almost done. Follow the pattern of sound doctrine. Or the, uh, the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me. In the faith and love of that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit of trust in you. And so Paul does what, what, what Paul does. He simply reminds Timothy, hold on. Paul says to Timothy what I tell our students all the time, be rooted. And they're like, ugh, right? Be rooted. Be planted firmly in the gospel. That's what he's saying. Follow the pattern of sound words. I've taught you the truth of God's word. I've taught you to love God, to serve God, to know God, to be faithful to God. Keep going. I've taught you that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Keep going. Don't swerve from that. Don't move in any other direction from that. Keep 
preaching the gospel to yourself, to the church. Keep going. Be single-minded. Be single-focused. No matter what you do, Timothy, do what you've been taught. And so these students, they've been taught the Word. The question is, are they going to be responsible to guard the good deposit? You've all been taught the Word of God. But the question is, is, are you going to be responsible to guard the good deposit? Are you walking, following the sound pattern of the, the pattern of sound words and sound doctrine that you've been taught your entire life? Maybe it hasn't been your entire life. Maybe it's been just for a year. Maybe it's been for five years. However long it's been. Are you following the Word of God as, as it has been taught? Correctly. Because here's the thing. We don't just gather just to read Scripture and just move on with our lives. The Word of God shapes and molds and forms us more and more into the image of God. And we have a responsibility to live it out, to flesh it out. So when we continue in that pattern, so students, adults, whoever you are this morning, be rooted in the gospel. That's the, the simple reminder of Timothy, uh, to Timothy there. That's Paul's final words. Be rooted in the gospel. Hang on to it. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in anybody else to save you. Trust in the word of God. Trust in the gospel. That Jesus lived the life that you couldn't live. Died the death that you should have died. And rose victoriously over an enemy that you could never defeat on your own. So seniors, as you begin this next chapter of your life, we're just going to talk to them for a minute. But I think this is still applicable to everybody. As you begin this next chapter of your life, remember those who have poured into you. Remember that they are merely a phone call away. Remember that they haven't abandoned you. Remember that they are always there to point you to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. There will come a day, students, when you're away from home, maybe you have your own family, you're doing your own thing, and you come to the end of your road. Unless I change my phone number, you have it. And I'm there. I've heard David talk time and time again of, of students in his student ministry. He's been out of student ministry forever. I mean, he was in it forever. He's been out of it forever, too, right? <laughs> of students that he still has to talk to. Counsels and walks him through. And so, just because you graduate high school and you aren't in the youth group anymore, doesn't mean that, that I'm not there for you. So remember the people that have influenced you. And so, and then and when they want to know something about their life, just be honest with them. You don't lie. Just go ahead and throw that one out there too. <laughs> Students, remember that God has wired you and given you specific passions and desires to use for His glory. So live for His glory. That's what you were created for. So do what you were created for. Remember that God is in control, that He is with you, within you, and that He goes before you. That you don't have to live in fear because you are His and He is in control. But to be a son or a daughter of God changes everything. It gives us confidence, it gives us boldness, it gives us courage. It gives us freedom just to, to live for God and to be obedient. Most importantly, remember what you've learned for the last two, two to five years. Be rooted. Be rooted. And so this morning as we come to this, this time of invitation, the question is, is this. Have you been influenced by God? Have you placed your faith and trust in, in the work of salvation that God has done on your behalf? Who has influenced you and discipled you and been there with you in the course of your life? No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, thank God for that. Literally thank God for them. And then will we be obedient, staying in the center of God's will no matter what? So this morning as we come to this time of meditation, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes as, as our worship team comes up to, to lead us in the time of meditation. How is it that you need to respond to that? Do you just need to praise God for the people that have influenced you? Do you need to be shaped and formed by God? Do you need to be brought from death to life? What is it that God has worked in your heart and in your life? And so we're going to, I'm going to pray and we're going to sing and we're going to have a short time of invitation. I just invite you, respond to God the way that He leads you to. Father, we thank you. God, that you have been at work from before time began to redeem and rescue us. 
God, that from before time again, you have been in control and nothing has slipped from your grasp. Not even yet. And so, God, we want to trust in you. We want to be bold in you. And we want to be in the center of your will. So, God, I pray that we would respond to you in these moments. God, that we would step out in faith. That we would trust your work of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. That it would shape us and form us. God, that we would uh, find people in our lives to disciple and to make. God, may we please you in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we stand. As we stand. Senior is Mr. Drake Lazier. Senior that can be here with us this morning is Mr. Joseph Moore. Uh, and then our last senior, she couldn't be here this morning, Ms. Briston Willie. So we want to uh, be able to pray uh, for these students. Just real quick, it's been so fun uh, to watch these these kiddos uh, grow up. Lauren's only been with us two, three years. Uh, when, when I got here, Drake uh, wasn't here long before we uh, started having the medical issues, and so he's been in and out, but just so so glad to see him grow up. It, it was funny, we were talking earlier, and I'm going to try to make this short. He was talking about he's just recently reconnected with a friend uh, that he hasn't seen in eight years, and he was like, he's changed, and I was like, you have too, uh, just in five years, and I was like, and it's just it's been amazing to, to watch him grow up, and then uh, JoJo, I mean, literally, I, those of you that remember when he showed up, he was probably about that tall, literally bouncing off walls, uh, literally. Uh, so it's just it's fun to see these these guys and girls just grow up uh, mature. So we're excited to see uh, what they're going to do with their lives and pray. Most importantly, they stay focused and smooth uh, and rooted, right, guys? Uh, and, and what God has for them. So I want to pray for them, and uh, we'll have our offering. Our ushers come up and take up our morning offering. Father, uh, we love you, and we thank you for uh, these young men and this young lady. God, we pray. I got that you would use them uh, in a great way uh, for the glory of your kingdom. God, we pray. Um, God, you would give them boldness and confidence, not in themselves, not in their own skills, not in their own passions, but Father, that they would have confidence because you have called them to that, to that task. God, I pray um, that as they grow up, they would love you and serve you faithfully uh, in a church. And God, that they would raise their, their family. 
to know you and to love you and to serve you uh, more than anything. God, we pray uh, for just um, your, your blessing over their lives. God, we just use them in a powerful way. So in Jesus' name I pray. Come and still my beating heart. 